What is up, four, five, six all stars, Soul Hills kids in general, and anybody else in the world that's watching this? I am so excited that you decided to join me today on this fun journey that we are having. If you don't know, we're walking through the Bible in a linear fashion from Genesis to Revelation, and right now we're just in Exodus. That's right second book of the Bible. We've been talking from Adam to Moses to Abraham to Noah and everyone in between and I'm so glad you are here today to dive into today's lesson. If you don't know, we've been talking about the Israelites and they're wandering through the wilderness as they leave Egypt. So far, they've confronted the Pharaoh. They've dealt with the ten plagues. They've crossed the river into um, the wilderness, and now we are dealing with some other things, okay? So they had, the manna had fallen from the sky, they, they crossed the river, all this stuff is going on, and they're kind of just in limbo. They're out in the wilderness, and God calls Moses to go to Mount Sinai. Now, if you've never heard of the story of the Ten Commandments, it's a really, really cool story, and I want to encourage you guys to listen in because it's going to be a ton of fun, but I've got an exercise for you guys first, okay? An exercise for your mind. Ooh, I want you guys to plan out, write out 10 rules. If you could rule the city that you lived in and you could make 10 rules, it doesn't matter what the rules are, everyone had to obey them in your city. What would those 10 rules be? Would it be like um, kids can play video games as long as they want, kids can get as much ice cream as they want, or maybe like everyone has to wear purple underwear on their head all the time. Would it be something like, like, what are your 10 rules? Write those down and then share them with somebody and ask them what they think about your rules. Because, well, we've all got ideas on rules and what should be followed. Today we've got our super fun Bible lesson that I'm excited to show you guys. So let's check out this week's Bible lesson on Exodus and the 10 commandments. And we're going to recap it after. Three months after the Israelites left Egypt, they came to Mount Sinai. God had chosen the Israelites as his special people, and he wanted them to understand what the relationship should look like. He planned to make a covenant or an agreement with them. Moses went up to the mountain. God told him, this is what you should tell the Israelites. If you listen carefully to me and you keep my covenant, you will be my people. Moses went back to the people and told them what God had said. All the people responded, We will do all that the Lord has spoken. So Moses went back up to the mountain. The Lord spoke to Moses, I am going to come in a thick cloud. I want the people to hear me speak to you so that they will believe you. Moses went back down the mountain and got the people ready to meet God. He brought them out of the camp and they stood at the foot of the mountain. God came down on Mount Sinai in a fire. Smoke covered the mountain. God said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Then God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. The first four commandments told the Israelites what it looks like to have a relationship with God. Do not have other gods besides me. Do not make an idol for yourself. Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The last six commandments told the Israelites what it looks like to have a relationship with one another. Honor your father and your mother. Do not murder. Keep your marriage promises. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not want what belongs to someone else. When the people heard God talking to Moses, they were afraid. Do not be afraid, Moses said. God wants you to fear him so that you will not sin. Moses went further up the mountain, and for 40 days, God gave Moses many more laws. When God was finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two stone tablets that he had written on with his own finger. God's law shows us what he requires. Our sin separates us from a holy God, but Jesus came to bring us back to God. When we trust in Jesus, he takes away our sin and gives us his perfect righteousness.
That is a really powerful lesson right there. The Ten Commandments are something that we may hear a lot, um, but they're really, really powerful. Let's look at uh, Exodus 19, verses 4 through 6, and see what the Lord was talking about. He said, You have seen for yourself what I did to Egypt. You saw how I carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Now obey me completely. Keep my covenant. If you do, then all then out of all of the nations, you will be my special treasure. The whole earth is mine. But you will be a kingdom of priests to serve me. You will be my holy nation. That is what you must tell the Israelites. So God is talking to Moses, and he says these things. He says, if you follow my commands and you obey these parts of me that I ask you to, then you will be raised up. Now, he's talking to the people of Israel here, but we see later that Jesus says some really, really similar things. He says, come follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Anyone who believes in Jesus shall not perish but have eternal life. When we believe in Jesus and when we obey him, we are able to follow him and we're able to grow in him and he cares for us. Now, let's look through these Ten Commandments once again. You're going to find these in Exodus chapter 20 in your Bible. There are ten, of course, ten commandments. The first one is don't put any other gods in front of you. That means if there's something that you love more than God... That's an idol. That's a god in front of you. Don't make any statues of God that look like anything in the sky or earth or the water, okay? So don't worship anything. Don't put anything again. It's kind of reiterating the first one. Don't make anything that stands for God. Number three is don't, you, don't misuse the name of the Lord your God. So this one's interesting here because... Yes, it may mean don't use God's name like uh, a swear word, right? You hear people say it all the time. They're like, oh my God. But that's probably not the best use of his name. But it also means don't use his name in a way that is bad. Don't try and use God to get what you want by saying, well, God said so. Because if he didn't really say so, that's using his name in vain. Number four is keep the Sabbath day holy. The Sabbath is something that a lot of us kind of forget about. We act like it's not in there, but the Sabbath day is a day for us to rest and refresh our bodies as we honor God and enjoy all that he's given us. Honor your father and mother. Don't commit adultery. Don't commit a murder. Don't steal. Don't lie about anybody. And don't long for anything that belongs to your neighbor. Basically, don't be jealous. Don't want something. So there, these are Ten Commandments, and they're pretty good rules for life. Even the ones like don't have a God before you or honor the Sabbath are things that science will tell us are actually really good. When we let things control us, they can take hold and build bad habits, like having another God besides our God. Or what about Sabbath? Science proves that people who Sabbath, who take a day of rest each week, are more healthy and are more productive which is crazy. And of course, everyone's going to agree. You shouldn't murder. You shouldn't steal from anybody. You shouldn't be super jealous about anything. Nobody enjoys that. But here's the thing. These sometimes can seem like a checklist, a rule book that nobody wants to follow. Blech. Who likes rules? They're annoying sometimes. But if we look closer, the Ten Commandments are actually a part of who God is. When you break a commandment that God has given you, you're directly going against something about God. Let's use murder, for example. When you murder somebody, you kill them. They're gone. They're dead. They no longer live on this earth. But we know that man was made in God's image. Man was made like God. And God loves each and every person. If we murder, we're directly telling God that this person that you made, I don't like them. They don't deserve to be here, right? Or stealing, right? Stealing goes directly against God because what does God constantly do? He gives. We talked about it last week. God gave manna to the people because that is part of his attribute is giving and loving and serving. So when we decide that we are better than the Ten Commandments, we're not just being better than a set of rules or being better and trying to be better than God who created everything. So think about these Ten Commandments. Maybe write them down. 
put them in front of your mirror or put them around your house somewhere so that you can see them and really reflect on what they mean in your life. Because the Ten Commandments aren't just rules to follow, but they tell us truths about who God is. And when we learn truths about God, we want to worship Him, which is what we are talking about this month, worshiping God. Thank you so much for listening, guys. I hope you have a great week and you are loving the new year. I'm going to see you next week with our next episode. Bye.